G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now, I've got the t-shirt on. I've got the hat on. It must be time for Stingray. And yes, it is. Look at her. Look at how she's turning out. She's not finished yet. I've done a lot of work with her. She makes a lot of noise and she carries on. In fact, if we turn out the lights, and that's what you get when you turn the lights out. Yeah. It all needs adjusting still. I think I've got too many LEDs on, but there you go. You've got flashing torpedo bloody things and everything. It's not fit together. It's only dry fit. I've got my fingers in the way. But this is where we're heading. Does that sound interesting? I hope so. Roll the music. So this is where I got to with the Stingray last time. I had done quite a few things. So one of them wasn't this horrible looking thing. Yeah. Um, that is just ridiculous. Um, as I pointed out in my last um, live show how silly it was. <laughs> I'll be scratch building one of those. But that can wait for a little while. I've um, put those clear perspex pieces in but they're only taped in so I'll take those out. I'd already primed this just to see how it all look. My fins at the back here they are loose. They're only ever dry fit with a little bit of that um, sort of sticky stuff that I use. So I will be gluing those in permanently. So that will be the assembly of the top. Oh, well, I'll drill out these. The scoops could do with little holes in them. Because otherwise, how are they going to get the torpedoes out? And the um, box art shows lights. And I'll research that and see if it's possible. Then I can get on with the painting of this. I'll need to do the red on the interior first and then mask that all out and then start painting all the blues and the whites and the yellows and everything. So we've got that to look forward to. Now this here also needs looking at. These are the fence, right? These go underneath, underneath here. Now that's all part of a mechanism that makes this into a little sort of bathtub toy. And I won't be using that as it is. I will cut those off and I will glue those little fins on as well. But I need to have a look at this mechanism because I thought there's no point throwing the baby out with the bathwater, okay? I want to show off this interior that I've made. So I'm pretty proud about the interior. I really want to show it off. So the kit comes with a whole lot of electrics, right? So you have a battery bay already built in. Don't need to really worry about sort of trying to find a way to mount batteries inside it. It's been done for you. Comes with contacts that are already made. So that'll be easy for me to replace batteries when I want to play with the thing in the bathtub. No, it won't be in the bathtub. And it comes in with a speaker and a few LEDs. So um, that is all included. So we might as well use that as much as we can. And I've got some of my own switches and things that I'll incorporate. And I've got my own LEDs, strip LEDs that I've been using. So I'm going to assemble that and put it in. Now... The action instructions don't tell you what size batteries. They just go, put batteries in, and it's all in Chinese, because mine is, well, Japanese. Mine's just um, that kit that's basically no English. There's no English anywhere. So I had a look at what is in this little battery holder section, and I managed to fit in a couple of double A's. So double A's fit perfectly. And then you've got this little thing that fits on there, which kind of screws in. So that'll be fine. I'll use that. They've got a switching mechanism goes in this hole it's a little bit gainly well you know it's a horrible big sort of pokey out thing i might be able to sort of either modify my switch but that's a press and hold switch which could be a bother i'd rather just a click on switch so i'll have a look at some switch mechanism here i may even take this raised piece they put here and chamfer that off so i'll be doing that there's a bit of modification there's also a little thing here for a rudder when you're playing with the bath I'll uh, cut that off and I'll fill that hole. So I have a little bit of fabrication still to do, but what I'd really like to do in this video is I'm going to see how I can incorporate my LED strip and the LED lights that I've got, because I've got big flashy lights here somewhere, for the impeller at the back. Right. That's the impeller. Okay. I'm not going to try and make it spin. It's too hard. You've got to um, cut some pieces off here and everything. Uh, at this stage, I probably won't bother. But what I'm going to concentrate on is, let's see if I can't use their lighting setup, but modify it and make it a bit less toyish for my needs. Let's have a look what they give us. Well, there's a speaker. It's sort of very interesting. And a bit of circuitry there. I wonder what that does. 
There's some wires, there's some things, so there's some bits and pieces. These are all the terminals for the batteries, and there's a spring, and there's a few little contacts there for the switch. So we'll have a look at those in a sec. So it's all interesting. And we've got two LEDs, a red one and a blue one. I wonder what they do. All right, lots to explore. Now, first of all, the battery area. So in this section here, tells you, take your little terminals, and you've got to sort of watch out with these terminals. There are positive ones and negative ones. So sort of the, um, I think the positive one dips in and the negative one pokes out. It's kind of the back to front to life, isn't it? So a little bit of sap and glue them in. I try to just click them in and bend them out. And then I realized actually you needed the terminals. So they just glue in there, not a problem. Very simple job. Only trouble is don't put your batteries in too soon and close it up. The batteries all fog up from CA fumes. Uh, gee, Harry, when are you going to learn? So there we go. See, there's a negative and a positive. You've got to make sure you get them around the right way. Can't have two positives. Uh, there's none of that sort of gender sort of stuff happening here. It's male and female, and they must be in that order. That's how it's done with batteries. Sorry. There is no fluidity with gender when batteries. Simply won't work. Electricity is not like that. Well, that didn't take long. I see I glued in those contacts. They're um, in pairs, so you've got to make sure you've got a positive and a negative one. So that was really easy to do. They um, explain that in the uh, diagrams. That easy to follow. Positive's got a dimple, negative's got a bumpy up. It's kind of the opposite of real life. But anyhow, they're designed to mate up with the battery. So they're in, and I tried to fold the tabs to the other side, thinking that hold them in place. Don't do that, because they've got holes in ready for your wires. So let's get on with that bit. So the next section here is building the switches and putting those in with a little spring mechanism. Now I'll do it, even though I may pull it all off and modify it later if it doesn't suit my needs, but we'll follow their bouncing ball and see how it goes. Now all those uh, pieces are on the sprue. There are a few of the parts that are actually left to put in. And this reminds me, there were all these um, skis, skids here, and they go in the bottom. Now that was on an episode of Stingray. It did actually have the skids, and they do that so that if you make it as a model, you can sit on the skids and sit on your shelf. But I'm going to put this up on plinths and, um, or pedestals, and um, make it look like a, you know, a proper little model sitting up so I can get my fingers in and hit my switch. So I'm going to do that. But that reminds me, these little holes here, which are for the skids, that's also going to need to be filled. So I have a bit of fabrication to do on here still, but let's get on with the electrics. Now the procedure's fairly simple really. It's, it's quite obvious. I've dry fit everything to sort of test it out. And there's, there's only a few parts to make this happen. There's a little context, it's very basic. Again, CA glue and pop in your little contact and don't bend it over. I try to bend it over sort of flat. You need to always keep the little pokey up things because they have wires that you need to solder in. So there's a top and a bottom to the switch, obviously. So one rotates, one stays still. When the contacts cross, bingo bongo, you got electricity to the model. Yeah, that's how it works. It's dumb, but it's actually very robust. It's, um, it's quite well engineered. It's quite surprised when I actually got around to putting it in eventually. So they're in, they're ready to go. Now, what do you got in there, Harry? Um, wires, yes, wires. So I needed to do that. I just dry fit. It's the old like wiggle the wire and twist it on thing just to test everything out. Plus, I was waiting for Becca to drop over the soldering iron because I couldn't find mine. So um, eventually, Becca dropped that over and I did a proper job with this, but just to test to see if it worked. Now we need to assemble this switch, and it's fairly easy following the diagram there. There's a washer that sort of fits on the spring, it fits on there. Above that is another washer that will have a little screw in it and that holds everything down tight and the spring provides the um, tension that will keep the contacts together. So first you put in the switch at the bottom then you put in the first of those things that we set up with their um, little contacts and then we put the top one on. Simple as that and then over that you put the spring, a little washery thing and then hopefully you get in with your um, little tweaker and you screw it in. There we go we have a working switch. Work through, I wired up the impeller, the way they said. I made the other light for the red one, I'm just following their instructions. I wired in the little sound box and speaker. Batteries are in and they're screwed in place. Because I found I was having a few little contact issues until I realized the CA glue that I put in there that actually fogged up a lot of the contacts. So I cleaned all of those, put the batteries in and screwed them Hard now. Moment of truth. Turn this little switch. Flashy blue light. Little flashy red light, which I don't know where it's going to go. It should probably go on the top here, but 
don't know, I might change that to something else. And um, what we want to see is how does it look with the top on. So it will flash, and the red one is flashing in there. So that could be a useful effect. Maybe I'll use the red one to flash at the front here where the torpedoes are where it shoots out. Now it doesn't have enough voltage to um, run my LEDs for uh, inside here. So these ones are my strip LEDs. So I'm going to have to set up a separate battery and switch for that, but that's okay because I've learnt in the past that if you've got the little flashy things happening, all right, I'll turn this off, it's a bit annoying. When you've got flashing LEDs and you try and put in static LEDs, well, the static LEDs end up flashing as well. We don't want that. We just want to, you know, the impeller looks good flashing with their blue. Flashing red light here maybe that can do these things. And, um, yeah. So, I'll get on with that. I've got my LED lights working inside there now. And as long as it's fairly dark in the room, you can see the interior all pops out. I haven't got the glass in there, but you know, we know that. Now, on with this. Oh, we don't have any sound. That's right, well, the sound's not working at the moment. It's, it's in silent running mode. But anyhow, look, there's your flashing impeller. Now, if I'm going to use this red one at the front here, as you can see, I'm going to need to black that out. So I probably need to put it in a tube uh, behind here. You can see I've drilled a little pilot hole. Oh, it is making sound, just not as loud. So, um, yeah, there's a little pilot hole there to see would that work, and that's not bad. So what I'll probably do is put the LED in the middle and run a tube that goes to either side to allow light to sort of bounce through, and then I'll black the whole thing out. So that might work as an effect for the um, torpedoes. I've got flashing impeller, and I've got a lit up interior. My lighting is pretty well done. I've just got to somehow um, get the interior lighting to work with the same switch. I don't have to have two switches. So, um, yeah. But I'm quite happy with that. Success. And Cess was very happy. All right, sit rep. I have blacked out the whole interior and I've also painted this section red. I've got a photo here showing you when I primed it. And then I did put red in there and um, so I could basically spray the rest of the black and get it all nice and blacked out and neat. I have my torpedo holes in and they will glow nicely with a little red um, lamps and I've yet to build the apparatus for it but I'm pushing ahead with a painting because I'd like to get to a point in this video where I've got something finished. So I've already put some white on here covering up the grey primer and that's kind of spilled out everywhere but um, one good thing about cyanide is, is when you have a sort of a splodge and you think oh no you leave it even if it's a drip, you leave it, it all flattens out overnight. And the next day just requires a little bit of sanding and you're away. It's a, <laughs> it saves a lot of disasters. Like in here, that kind of looks blobby. But actually, I've just lightly sanded over that. It's perfectly smooth. It's all perfectly smooth. And it gives a bit of an etch that you can get your colours on. Believe me, Steinol Res is my saviour. So that's all masked up so I don't accidentally airbrush in there with my colours and mess up my red interior. So um, that's what that's for. The white, why have I got that? Well, along here are two pen stripes. So the best way that I think I can do it is I've painted all this white. And uh, I'll actually, well, it's white primer. I'll put some white paint over that now. And then I'll put tiny thin strips of Tamiya flexible tape. And they'll be my pen stripes. So they'll mask out what will be my pen stripes. And then I'll paint the blue over the top of that. But before I do any of that, I uh, will have to get the silver in on this, so I'll put my pinstripe tape on now, but then I'm going to prime the whole thing in a silver grey, which I do have in Steinerys. So that'll basically give it all a nice surface to work off, because there are silver edges here, this whole section here is silver. There's lots of silver on it, and that's a good base colour to work on. And then from there I can add my yellow. Yellow will go over silver, no worries at all. My light blues, and then I can put in the dark blue for the little dark blue recesses. And hopefully we can get a lick of paint on this for the end of the video. 
So I've got this far and I've got all these things wired in and soldered up and lo and behold it works. So that's good, that's all locked down. I did manage to bump the soldering iron on the side here and actually do a little gouge but I'm gluing the fins in, they're going to hide everything, by the time I putty all that up you'll never see a thing. Now I've got out the very very fine masking tape, I couldn't find the bendy stuff but this stuff's pretty bendy, It's I think it's a 0.4 so um, it's a matter of you pull out a long piece and you keep the tension on, it's too hard to film you keep the tension on and you just like start at one end and try and get stuck and you keep the tension on you just keep moving it pushing it down and moving it oh, it's a bugger of a job but I did manage to get two pinstripes they're not too bad they're kind of bunched up at the front a bit I couldn't help that but generally speaking you're going to see it sort of side on and I think I'm pretty close so that means the white that I've put on there that um, will now be protected because we're now going to go with the silver over the top well, I'm out of the spray booth and I have got the metal colour on there. It's um, it's sort of a dull silver, it's more like an aluminium, but that actually suits the Stingray quite nicely. So I've got that pretty well all over where there wasn't white, and that's my primer. And I'm going to use a lot of that. I mean, all this is silver and there's silver over there and there's silver bits here. So, you know, it's uh, it's going to work well for the metallic effects. But what I need to do now is start masking, because it's had a few hours now to dry while I went and had a grandpa nap. <laughs> now they there are marks on the actual kit there's little ridges they put which are for painting and I've checked the Jerry Anderson model itself and they are so close that I'll be able to follow them anyway so you know that that means I don't have to sand them off because I forgot to do that what sanding I will have to do is there was one little gouge here you can see where I've put some uh, little filler in there a little bit of aqueous um, surface filler I've put on there that'll dry pretty quickly and that showed up with the silver so I thought oh it's going to be yellow in there because that's this is silver right or metal that is uh, blue and then that is yellow there's three different colors and then this is dark blue so you've got four colors all together to make this happen so that would really show up in yellow yeah just like metallic color yellow will make that pop out so I filled that tunnel gouge I think that's from when I was sort of working on things with a knife and I slipped on vaguely remember doing that in the previous video anyhow what I need to do now is mask this up and start working on the yellow sometimes when you're doing this stuff you luck out and it just so happens that these fins mask perfectly if you put uh, tape up like that right, just above the little line and when you roll it over the other side it comes down pretty well on that line I mean obviously when it curves up here you've got to uh, address that with different tape but that's really uh, quite easy but when you do get to the top bit, and I'll have to cut that bit off there. So you get to the top bit, you need to go to wider tape. Unfortunately, I've only got wide or really thin. My um, intermediate tape is all gone. I think I had some in order. I think I got Becker to get it for me, and he's forgotten to give it back to me. So, again, half and half. Do the old half and half trick. And the beauty with this kit is there's so many score lines that make it really easy so using your nice sharp knife there's a little trough there and you can just follow the trough try not to bend the fin off its um, thing and then Peels right up and you've got a perfect edge. I'll loosen that fin, I'll just put a bit of glue in there to set that fin again. But there you go, I'll keep going, but most of it's easy as that. These ridges here are just high enough that you can very carefully sort of work it out with your fingernail where they are 
and then once you sort of made a little score mark with your fingernail you come along with your knife and you can just gently press up against the ridge edge and you can cut all these complicated curves at least get pretty close so masking is actually quite easy for something that's quite, quite a complex shape there you go she's all painted uh, yes we kind of skipped over that bit in this video that will be in the next video. I'll show you all the masking and how all the painting went together there. She still needs a few little touch-ups, and I'll show you how to fix little errors and touch-ups and the rest of it. Probably try and get some paint on the fins. Haven't got that as well. But she is starting to look like a stingray. I hope you enjoyed all the electrics that we put in. That was a lot of fun. And I will finish that off. I've still got a wire in the lights here. I don't want to touch this too much. It's still wet. So anyhow, there's buttons down here. Look at these buttons. Yeah, yeah. they're stingray buttons. Anything can happen. Anything can happen if you push them. <laughs> yes. I've had so much fun with this, so I hope you've enjoyed the journey with me. And there is a lot more to come. But that's about it for this video. I'll see you next time when we finish off the paint job. And I'll show you all the little tricks I did to try and get all the different masking. There's a lot of masking in this. There really is. All right. Goodbye from Australia. And it's Huru from Harry Udini.